Hare Krishna, this is my message to ISKCON's internet preachers. This mode of preaching via the internet was developing and then the lockdown came and it's become very prominent, it's expanded tremendously because classes which were formerly in the temples and some temples used to broadcast them, but now pretty much all Namhata, Bhakti Viksha meetings, plus all temple classes, they're being broadcast on the internet. And in the meantime, while the lockdown's going on, there are various devotees have come to understand that this is a means by which I can speak to so many people, potentially. So, ISKCON's internet preaching and internet preaching has massively increased. The number of internet preachers has massively increased. It's an opportunity. Krishna is providing the intelligence to take <coughs> this opportunity as other opportunities close. However, there are some disadvantages, everything in this material world, there's some advantage and disadvantage. Even in the, even in, of course there's no disadvantage in chanting Hare Krishna, but there is if we don't chant offenselessly. Even with book distribution, if, if we don't, do, with any form of preaching, if we don't do it properly, that means purely in the manner prescribed by Srila Prabhupada and the previous great authorities, then there can be effects which are not salubrious. So one, one point is that the internet is egalitarian. It means anyone can get on it. Anyone with an internet connection and a, and a means to broadcast something, which isn't very difficult these days by the grace of modern technology, anyone can get on there and say whatever they like, although we're supposed to say what Krishna likes, but not everyone seems to understand that what I like and what Krishna likes are not necessarily the same thing. And we find among uh, ISKCON's internet preachers that often the most popular, as can be understood from the number of hits which are uh, marked there, but are not ISKCON's top leaders. Often others are more appealing. That, that's not necessarily a bad thing because uh, we hope that the next generation and future generations of ISKCON devotees will bring so many preachers to the fore and, uh, and as Srila Prabhupada writes in one purport in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita that by the grace of Lord Nityananda, a devotee can do even more than Lord Nityananda himself. Ram had to build a, a bridge over the ocean. It was an, an, a spectacular, wondrous, miraculous bridge. But Hanuman just jumped. So it might seem that Hanuman in some respects was more than Ram. So we want that so many devotees will be preaching. And if the big shot devotees are not the most popular, it's not necessarily the worst thing. And in some ways we can say, good, good. The, the next generation have imbibed things so well, so nicely that others are attracted to hear what they have to say. So my message is here, not directly to the top leaders of ISKCON, not to my god brothers. Uh, I, I, how can I ins instruct them? But particularly to almost all the internet preachers of ISKCON, as almost all of them are junior to me. Two main points, and I'll elaborate on them. Number one, remember where the message comes from and where the ability comes from. The ability to speak or the ability to do anything. Krishna is in the ability in man. And remember that the message is more important than you. 
Now, the first point, remember where the, the, the message and the ability comes from. It comes from Krishna. If you don't know what that means, I'm not going to give the translation. If you don't know what it means, don't try to preach Krishna consciousness on the internet. Go back and study Bhagavad Gita as it is many times carefully before you do that. Uh, now, Krishna gives intelligence, but specifically all of us in the International Society of Krishna, for Krishna Consciousness, we are getting Krishna through Srila Prabhupada. And the message that we have learned, hopefully, is in line with what Srila Prabhupada gave us. And as Srila Prabhupada said once, writing to one of his most talented speakers among his disciples, it was Bhagavan Das, was recognized um, among the galaxy of devotees who could present the message of Bhagavad Gita as it is eloquently. He was, he was in the top league. Srila Prabhupada wrote to him, what will your three minutes talk do? Better they buy a book. In another place, in another letter, Srila Prabhupada wrote that the test of your preaching is how many books are sold. And at that time, books sold meant Prabhupada's books. Now, there are so many books, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I'm also writing books. But uh, the main books for promotion, for distribution, should be Srila Prabhupada's books, especially Bhagavad Gita, as it is. So many books, all of the books. So, our preaching should be to induce people to buy Srila Prabhupada's books and to read them. A lot of our internet preaching is to devotees, not to the public, just like I am now speaking. This is not a talk for the general public to try to get them interested in Krishna consciousness. It's a message to those who are already practicing devotional service under the aegis of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And many talks are going like Bhakti Vriksha and this and that, but one aim should be to get the devotees and the non-devotees to whoever we're speaking to, to have Srila Prabhupada's books, to buy them and to read them. It doesn't mean that it has to be specifically stated in every talk, um, but our aim is educational, to interest people in the topics of Krishna consciousness so that they want to learn more. And again, that applies to uh, devotees and non-devotees. If someone thinks, oh, it's, uh, that's uh, some very good points are being made there. Where is, it, where is it coming from? Where does this person get his knowledge from? And then they may want to read the books. So and, and another good thing to do is to direct people to the reading, readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. Um, Krish, uh, sorry, Kesha Bharati Maharaj, Kesha Bharati Goswami, has a whole series of uh, simply reading Srila Prabhupada's books with a little discussion at the end of each video. Uh, so that's another way you can access Srila Prabhupada's books. That's in English, and um, many of Srila Prabhupada's lectures are, tr are translated into various languages with voiceovers. Uh, that's been done for all of Srila Prabhupada's lectures in Russian, and many of them in Tamil and Hindi and Telugu, and uh, maybe in so many other languages also. So we can, it, we can encourage devotees to listen to Srila Prabhupada's lectures, in English and other languages, and to readings just like Kesha Bharati Maharaj is doing, and um, that presumably some devotees are doing that in other languages also. If not, someone can and should do it. Um, my personal experience, I, I just, well, of course, I've been listening to Srila Prabhupada's lectures since literally the day I was allowed to join this movement. Um, <clears throat> but now I'm, I'm hearing for the first time uh, the readings 
by Kesha Bharati Maharaj. And and for me, it's been it's a new dimension because I re, I'm going through Bhagavad Gita as it is, his readings of that, and I've I've read Srila Prabhupada's books many times, including Bhagavad Gita as it is. But it's a it's a new dimension hearing it read by uh, an enthusiastic and uh, lucid speaker. Uh, just hearing it gives so many different insights. It's, it's just amazing. As Srila Prabhupada writes in one purport, if one is to read all 18 chapters of the Bhagavad Gita every day, he will get new insights every day. And by by hearing, I'm finding that is uh, so uh, enlivening and enlightening. I'm digressing a bit here, but my point is that uh, we can also encourage people to devotees. They may be reading the books. We hope they're reading the books. They can also listen to Prabhupada's lectures and readings of the books. The point is to let we should be speaking in such a way that people become inspired to go to the source of the knowledge that we're speaking, which is Srila Prabhupada in his lectures and specifically Srila Prabhupada himself he emphasized his books. Our presentation should be in a manner that people want to learn more. And for that, we can direct them to Srila Prabhupada's books. In other words, our presentation should be educational rather than for entertainment. Now, that doesn't mean that there can't be some humor or whatever. Um, but especially those who are giving talks, dressed as a sadhu, the tradition that we've got from Srila Prabhupada, who got it from his own guru, it's, it's a grave presentation. There are other mediums also, just like there are some YouTube presentations which are humorous, but clearly educational. I saw one, I believe it's called Shikshartam, it's a Hindi channel which is meant for educating devotees. I just saw it was it was humorously showing different kinds of people who come to a Bhagavad Gita book stall and they give various objections why they shouldn't buy the book and how the devotee answers and gets them to buy a book. So it's somewhat humorous but at the same time it's clearly educational in a manner that is very useful for devotees who are selling Srila Prabhupada's books. So they may be like that but especially those who are sitting, giving a talk, uh, especially we have to remember that uh, Srila Prabhupada, how did, how did he uh, speak? How did he preach? Uh, he was very grave, obviously. Now, YouTube speaking can be seen as... A, or we may think we need to do a little acting or something like that. Or at least we should be more attentive when we're out on the internet where anyone, anywhere, anytime can access it. We may need to be particularly attentive to uh, how we are dressed nicely. Mm. We may, we may be, I'm saying. I'm Myself, I'm not so much strong on that point. Um... or how we, how we speak stitha pragyasya ka bhasha samadhi stitha kesha when Arjuna asks Krishna how does a self-realized person speak Krishna didn't say well he gives uh, he, he's, he's, he's been to public speaking courses and he speaks in a certain pitch and he modulates his voice so that it goes up and down and it's very attractive. Prajahati yada kaman. Krishna says, he, Krishna actually doesn't directly answer the question, but he says the, the person, the, the characteristic of a person who self-realizes is that uh, he's, in all respects, he is freed from sense gratification. <clears throat> so... Yeah, presentation, it may, that may help also, just like in, in presentations in our temples and elsewhere, we often use a screen with slides or 
so that may be helpful for the internet also, or we may, we may after the speaking is done, there may be dubbed in pictures which are relevant. Uh, these are devices which can be, which can help to enhance the presentation. Uh, enhance the presentation means we want, then more people will be attracted to it. But again, remember the message is more important than us. There can be a tendency to want to make a bit of a show to become popular. It's a, it's a tension because we don't personally want to be popular. We're not trying to promote ourselves, I hope. If we are, then we shouldn't be out there. Uh, we want people to listen because we want to give Krishna's message. And so we try to make it attractive and we try to, uh, in, in various ways, which I've said, by dressing nicely, having good lighting and sound, speaking clearly so that people can understand, and not speaking in a way that people have to uh, strain to hear themselves. Uh, we can have good titles for the talks that make people want to find out what it's all about. But remember that attractiveness in itself is not our aim, it's the message that is important. Krishna is all attractive, let us direct people toward Krishna. Let us not get in the way of Krishna and divert people toward ourselves. That's be called being a transparent via medium, that's what Srila Prabhupada used to call it. We should be transparent that Krishna, if we're actually speaking on behalf of Krishna, then Krishna will be pleased to manifest on our tongue by the grace of Sarasvati. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati, Deving Sarasvati, Vyasam, by the grace of all these great personalities and ultimately Krishna, Krishna will be pleased to manifest himself through us and uh, people will be attracted to Krishna. The aim is not to make that people will be attracted to us. The message is important. Srila Prabhupada, who profusely produced literary masterpieces in the form of his books, wrote to one disciple, I'm paraphrasing it from, from one letter, Srila Prabhupada said that our aim is not to produce literary masterpieces, but our aim is to inform people that there is a blazing fire of material existence that we need to make a solution to. <clears throat> so in the same way, our aim is not to produce verbal masterpieces or something which appeals to people so much as it wakes them up to their predicament. We're in this material world, we're suffering because we are not Krishna conscious. The message is so important and so urgent. Uh, we need to present it in such a way that people will listen. But if we become more concerned that people will listen, that we tamper a bit with the message, because after all, most people don't want to hear that we are fools and rascals and demons and we're suffering in this material world, which you may put it in nice language and this and that, but if you put it in too nice language, then you lose the message altogether. So our point, not, not that everyone's going to speak in exactly the same style, but our, mess, our point should be that we, we should follow in the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada, speak what he said and in the same mood that we're trying to enlighten others, uh, to give them as humble servants, we're trying to enlighten others with this knowledge. Mm. Uh, not that, again, not that we're trying to make ourselves popular. It's attention because we want that, and Srila Prabhupada will be very happy if we're very popular presenting the message as he gave it. And as Srila Prabhupada himself said, we can give it in our own words and our own language, but it has to be distinctly the same message. Otherwise, what's the point? What is the point? Why are we doing this? Because we want to present the message of Bhagavad Gita 
as it is, as received in the Parampara. And Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita and Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is a huge ocean of nectar, of topics, of Krishna. So this is what we want to present. And we, as Srila Prabhupada did also, we can use examples, we can use hooks in the sense that uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, for instance, in his early Back to Godhead magazines, he would, uh, this was before he came to America, he would sometimes open an article with some point of topical interest and then use that as a platform to present the message of the Absolute Truth. So it's like a hook, you can say, because if we tell people, now we're going to speak Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam, we're going to speak the knowledge, scientific knowledge regarding the personality of Godhead. We're not going to get so many people as if we say, we're, as if we're going to say, well, now we're going to talk about who's likely to get elected at the next election. Or maybe, actually, maybe if we say, now we're going to speak about Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam, Maybe we will get more people because there's hardly anyone speaking Bhagavad Tattva Vigyana. There are thousands of the whole world but ba -ba 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 -ba, who will get elected. There are so many people talking about that. So maybe we can say it out directly, but we can use hooks also. There's no harm in that as long as we come to the right point without getting off on a huge, long spiel. There's, there's one uh, incident recorded that once in South America, one of Srila Prabhupada's sannyasis started telling some long story and a talk, and Srila Prabhupada said, he just stopped him and said, stop all this nonsense, so just speak the message as it is. That sannyasi later fell away, and later he became very critical of Srila Prabhupada. He couldn't, couldn't take being told what he needed to hear by Srila Prabhupada himself. So, uh, attractive, yes, but at the same time, we have to be very careful not to become enamored by the desire to become popular in our own right. I want to be popular, I can say, and one said, I want to be, po I want that many people will listen to my talks. Why? Because I am in my own humble way, I'm trying to present the message of Krishna, and I know that people need to hear this. So I want that I'll be popular, but not exactly that I will be popular, because of the message, not because of me. Mm. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu warns, Nishidacha kutinati jibe hingshan laba puja pratishtadi jata upashaka gon. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining to Srila Rupa Goswami about the growth of the creeper of devotional service, it's allegorical, of course, uh, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains that there are many weeds which can grow, which can inhibit the growth of our devotional creeper. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mentions Nishidacha, forbidden behavior, Kutinati, diplomacy, Jive Hingshan, violence to other living beings, and Laba Puja Pratishtadi, and the desires for material gain by performing devotional service, for respect and position, and so on. These are subtle desires in the heart that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu warns against. Warns against. So I'm not saying that most devotees, I'm not presuming that most devotees are trying to promote themselves so that they can become popular and respected, but there is a danger there. Otherwise, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wouldn't have warned about it. And 
Uh, I wouldn't be speaking about this if there wouldn't if there weren't signs that some of our internet preachers are becoming missing the point. As Srila Prabhupada wrote in one letter, there are writing to leaders, there are talking about devotees in his movement, there are symptoms of missing the point. It, it can happen because all of a sudden we're out there in the public, we're getting likes, we're becoming respected, uh, people are writing very uh, appreciative comments. Maya will test us. There may come some pride and some desire to promote ourselves more and more and more. There may be a desire for wealth. That, oh, I can, maybe I can get people to subscribe to my, they ask for donations. Now, of course, wealth in Krishna's service can be used, but there can be a desire. That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Laba, he warns that we, there's nothing wrong with getting wealth, position, honor in Krishna's service if we use it in Krishna's service. But in the name of Krishna's service, if we get these things and we can't digest it, we can't mentally digest, we, you know, digest it means we offer everything to Krishna and become in this, we remain a transparent via medium. Otherwise, if we want to enjoy something, then that becomes poison for us. It's very, very dangerous. Then we, we all want to live opulently, or oh, now I've become a big shot. I have to, I have to stay in a five-star hotel. I have to have all the best facilities because after all, so many people want to hear from me, so I must be important. I need fancy cars, apartments. I have to dress nicely, right? So I should have gold buttons. And it goes on and on. Uh, Often in such cases, these subtle attachments, which start to grow in the heart, we may not, subtle so we don't notice them. And then when the time is right, Maya, who is gradually pulling us away, strikes in the form of gross, gross temptation in the form of women Kanaka Kamini, when one becomes attracted to wealth, prestige, comfort, opulence, then Kanak, gold, is followed by the desire for enjoying lusty women. <clears throat> and also, even if we start off speaking very nicely, very purely, with a pure intention, when we start to uh, become popular and we start noticing it, and then our speaking, to the extent that our speaking is no longer only for the purpose of benefiting others by giving the true message of Krishna as it is, as long as, as soon as there's any little desire for, for anything personal, then our message becomes unbeneficial and not only non-beneficial but uh, we subtly convey a meme that others also by hearing us they also become infected by wrong desires and gradually our message becomes it, it uh, gradually our message becomes compromised it's a slippery slope if we do it properly it can do it great good for ourselves and others, as Srila Prabhupada was told by his own guru about preaching in the West. You can do, if you do it, it can, will benefit you and benefit others also. But if not, it can do great harm to others. A Vaishnava Mokhod Girnam Putam Harikatam Ritam Shravana Naiva Karatavya Sarpo Chishtam Yata Payam. We are warned that we should not hear from non-Vaishnavas. Even topics of Krishna, even though it's nectar, because it becomes like milk touched by the lips 
of a serpent. Therefore, we are gravely enjoined not to hear it. Now, wait a minute. What am I talking about here? Am I saying that some ISKCON preachers are non-devotees? Well, just consider who does this refer to? Is there anyone who speaks Krishna Kata who thinks now I'm going to I'm going to speak Krishna Kata and poison others? No, everyone, any, anyone who speaks Krishna Kata thinks, well, yeah, I'm I'm speaking. I'm a devotee. Even the Mayavadis, when they speak, they think now I'm speaking devotionally about Krishna. So, as much as we don't present the message as it is. That much, it becomes poisonous. Think about it. So we should never think that we're safe. I'm not safe. Who is safe in this material world? This is Maya's kingdom. Therefore, we have to keep ourselves safe. We're never safe, but as long as we're holding on to Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, then we're safe. How do we do that? by following their instructions, never compromise on our basic sadhana just to push so hard. Oh, I have to do more recordings, have to go here and there, have to do this and that. And then sadhana becomes secondary. In other words, we think that I am the doer. Uh, I did all that sadhana previously. I used to read the books. I don't need that now. Now I'm big shot. Stay grounded. We may go up in the air. A star, we may become a... Facebook star. Star means up in the sky. Remember, keep our f keep our feet on the ground and realize we're in the we're in the world of Maya. Maya can knock us over any moment. We're all small servants. the The desire to become big is simply Maya's trick. We what are we doing? What are we speaking for? It is our service. Always a service attitude is our service to inform others that Krishna is big, not to make ourselves big. If we have any other motive than serving Srila Prabhupada's mission of promoting, of telling everyone Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we are all his very minuscule servants. If we have any other motive, if we promote ourselves, it becomes a disservice. It's not building Srila Prabhupada's mission. It's building our ego. And that's what everyone else in the material world is doing. So remember that our message is grave. It's a very grave message. Srila Prabhupada presented it gravely. We're suffering in this material world. Anadi karma phale. Pari Bhavana Vajale, we're, we're, since time immemorial, we're drowning in this ocean of material existence. Srila Prabhupada de, gra delivered it gravely. There is one letter from Srila Prabhupada in which he expressed much displeasure in uh, a, re a recording of him being published, of him speaking with Tampura in the background. Ding, 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 ding. Srila Prabhupada, he didn't like that. He said then people will take it as an entertainment and take it cheaply. That it's a very minor thing, you may say. But Srila Prabhupada didn't want it. He said our, our message is very grave. We don't want people to take it as cheap entertainment. So it is our grave responsibility to deliver the message as it is. We know those terms, that term, as it is. So that people become attracted to Krishna's message, not to our speaking style, good looks, humor, intelligence, or anything else. We may package the message, but keep the message intact. So in conclusions, sorry if I sounded somewhat negative, but as I said, there, some warning is required. There are signs of missing the point. Conclusion, do it. Preach. Flood the world with Krishna Kata. But kindly heed this warning also. Hare Krishna. Vancha kalpa tarubhyas charki pa sindhubya evacha. Patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namaha. 
Tantainitaya Chira Kang Padaya Nepatya Kritva Chaka Kushatame Tadaham Ravimi He Sadhava Sakala Eva Vihaya Durach Chaitanya Chandra Charane Guruta Nuragaha